Hey everyone, it's Jesse McCollum. I'm here today showing you guys the new Cyclone 262. And today we're gonna to show you how to set up a spool gun for this machine, run through putting the spool on the gun, how to tension it all up, and then how to set up your machine. And a couple little tips and tricks on running better aluminum MIG welds. So here we are on the uh, control panel of the new Cyclone 262. You can see along this top row, we've got a bunch of different options, C25, C100, aluminum, stainless steel, flux cord, flux cord with gas, and then DC for stick. So we're gonna go over to our aluminum setting. It shows you how the torch is supposed to be set up and the workpiece. And now all these are, are for the power set mode. It just tells the machine what process you want to run. So we hit this power set mode. It'll bring up our options for our workpiece thickness, our wire diameter. So the machine knows we're running aluminum. It knows we're running aluminum wire. So everything's gonna be tailored to that process. So we can go through and adjust our, uh, that's our trim. So we can scroll through our options, our workpiece thickness. And you can see it adjusting the, uh, the settings as we go up in thickness. Once you select the material thickness and your wire size, you can see here it gives you a range. So it's telling us we're a little high or a little bit low. And now we're in range. All right, so now we've got our machine set, spool gun's ready to go. We're gonna run three passes with the same machine settings. I'm gonna show you a couple little tricks as we go along and the welds will progressively get better. Okay, so as you can see in this run, we had our, our settings where we wanted them on the machine, but we were super low on gas flow. So we were running like 20 CFH where you'd normally be doing hard wire, solid wire, kind of a standard MIG setup. You can see it was super sooty, very dirty, and actually started to blow through on this back side. So I went ahead and stopped. It's not worth running the rest of that weld out. So we're gonna change our gas flow and go up to 40 CFH, make another run, and show you the difference. All right, as you can see here, the weld was quite a bit better. It's still very sooty. There's a lot of contamination in it, but we got a much better bead profile. You can actually see the bead now. Uh, it did start getting a little bit hot there at the end, and that's because we're dragging that bead. And so we're not pushing our shielding gas forward and purging the atmosphere. So we're still getting a lot of contamination. So now we're gonna run the same settings on the machine, 40 CFH, but we're gonna, we're gonna push instead of drag and we're gonna see a significant difference in this weld. All right, so on this last run, still not absolutely perfect. We could dial the machine in a little bit better, but you can see between the first two runs, we have a significant improvement. Uh, it's not nearly as much sooting. The bead's a lot cleaner, it's a lot shinier. We got a lot better bead profile. And then at the end, when we terminated, we don't have nearly as big of a crater. Uh, a lot of that just comes from, as we're, as we're pushing along, that shielding gas is going out in front of our puddle and it's keeping the, the atmosphere purged. So we just get a lot nicer weld. So when you combine proper machine settings, proper gas flow, and proper technique of pushing the weld instead of dragging, you can see we have a significant improvement even with the same machine settings. So here's our three runs going from our first run to our last. So our first run was 20 CFH doing a drag. Then we went up to 40 CFH doing a drag and then 40 CFH doing a proper push. So you can see a pretty big difference here. So if you've got a 262 and you want to run a spool gun, follow a couple of these tips and you're going to have a lot better luck. I'm Jesse McCollum, brain ambassador for Everlast Welders. Remember, weld mean, weld green.